Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting September 5th, 2019 at 6 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, this meeting will be recorded. If anybody wishes to speak tonight, um, please, we have several microphones at the table and a standing microphone. If you'd come up and just state your name, who you are, and um, what your question is clearly into the microphone so people at home can, can hear. Um, so the main, main reason for this meeting tonight was to be, um, again, the last informational session before our debt exclusion vote, which will be taking place Monday, um, September 9th, this coming Monday, from 8 a.m., uh, excuse me, from 10 a.m to 8 p.m. at night. Um, people can come in and vote, and um, people can vote absentee ballot before that if you're gonna be away. So um, there were a couple of things we just wanted to go over was um, a little bit about uh, the grant and where we're at with the funding on the project, um, which is really great news uh, to share. And then a little bit of a flow chart of where, where we have been in the process and where we plan to go in the process and kind of an organizational um, chart and there's some handouts which everyone may have which is kind of a, a flow chart of our decision making and where we still need to go on the project depending on that um, there's another which is the kind of out, outline of the uh, uh, kind of a site view overhead view of, of the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plan and um, color coded depending on what we want to tackle based on what, what's in the grant and um, you know what we had asked for for appropriation and then a um, a large kind of calendar schedule of events, um, you know, tasks that we still need to do and tasks we have done. And then this, this chart is, has been around for a while, but it's just kind of the impact uh, to, the, to the users and to um, taxpayers for the, for the financing of the project. Um, so first, you know, in conjunction with this larger project is our emergency repair of our secondary clarifier. So, um, we've been working on that. We opened bids. Um, I was hoping I could have Dave come up and um, talk a little bit about that process and um, the two companies that we looked at and then um, discuss tonight where we'd want to move forward and, and um, take the recommendation from the committee that, that put this forward and where we'd like to move forward on that and uh, which company would like to go for and that would then go into the, um, to the contracted bids. So do, do you have a moment, Dave? Sure. Give us an update. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Um, members of the select board and town administrators should have a copy of this uh, memo. Yep. It was distributed by email yesterday. Uh, this memo summarizes um, kind of a pre-procurement process that we went through for the secondary clarifier uh, as discussed and as authorized by the town. Um, essentially what it does is it allows the town to um, consider uh, different clarifier uh, manufacturers and their mechanisms relative to the upgrade. And then once selected or awarded, uh, that vendor would then be carried in the general contract bid that would be required of the general contractor to carry that piece of equipment. So um, I'm going to try to give, again, a bit of a Reader's Digest version and can yeah. certainly answer any deeper questions that the, the group may have. But um, a uh, uh, town of Deerfield convened um, a, a committee called it the, uh, the uh, Secondary Clarifier Mechanism Procurement Committee. Of course, we come up with a crazy acronym to match that. Um, the group met on August 27th at the treatment plant. Uh, eight representatives of the town and DPC were on that committee. Um, the non-price proposals were open for both uh, proposals. Two were received. Two proposals were received uh, by the uh, bid deadline. And based on that evaluation, um, most of the criteria of the two manufacturers were similar. Uh, but there were some key differences in the technical merits of the two proposals um, that really made one proposal highly advantageous on behalf of the committee and one that was not advantageous. And some of the reasons for that were just one manufacturer providing um, more resilient equipment, equipment that better met um, the intentions of the specifications, um, uh, those of, you know, Keith. Keith had some very strong feelings about one manufacturer over another. There were some service advantages regionally, uh, track record, et cetera. So um, the envelopes were open for both clarifiers mm -hmm. prior to the technical evaluation. Uh, but based on that evaluation, uh, the group concluded and recommended to you, the select board, to move forward with the, the bid from West Tech. Mm -hmm. um, their bid was slightly higher than the other bid, uh, but again, it was highly advantageous. The other one was ranked not advantageous. 
uh, due to a lot of exclusions in the contract too. Um, right. That if, really. I yeah. Mean, if, we ahead, ha Aaron, if we had, if we had ended up with them, that it would have cost more ultimately to meet all the things that we needed to get Yeah, it done. would have cost more. There would have been also okay. a lot of things that got shifted to the general contractor to do because they were excluded. Right. And um, okay. the less that you have to have the general contractor mark things up in unknowns and guess the, you know, the, the I guess the, just the fair it is as a baseline for right. the general contractors to bid on things. But right. it's a very good manufacturer was the original basis of design. And um, this process basically would conclude with um, we'd ask your consideration for the West Tech uh, um, to move forward with that. So the next step would be if you uh, choose to move forward with West Tech, uh, Town of Deerfield would enter into a contract with them based on their bid. That contract would then get transferred into the general contract, um, and then the general contractor would carry that line item based on the price that was provided. And uh, they would roll their numbers up on top of that in terms of the upgrade. So. Again, I've glossed over a lot of steps that the committee went through. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we went through that uh, initial evaluation on day one. It was followed by about four days of uh, thoughtful and thorough evaluation of the technical merits and legal merits and the exclusions. And then the group came up with that recommendation, uh, which you have before you in, in, in terms of the memo. Okay. Okay. Um, again, there, uh, I think the, the two companies um, that had bid was, uh, ESI and West Tech. Uh, again, you based kind of some of that on West Tech. The um, ESI bid was 137.9, or just about 138. The other is 213. Correct. But again, a lot of the exceptions that ESI put into that, um, once you add all those in or push them onto the contractor, you're going to be over mm -hmm. West Tech's price. Or and this is why you chose to go through this process. You know, right. sometimes you might get this as a or equal under a conventional bid mm -hmm. process. And then it might be a battle with the contractor, uh, you know, whether that one meets the specs or not. Right. And, uh, and those can lead to more, you know, confrontational or uh, progressive things towards change order. So in this case. Um, Safer bet. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's always great when you have five bids and they're all highly advantageous and they're all numbers are all within five grand of each other. But, I mean, this is just. Right. But there are reasons why these numbers are very different. And if you look at the recommendations in the memo, uh, on page three, I, items 8A eight, eight yep. through 8H. I mean, for those that really want to understand the technical basis for the recommendation, that's it. Yeah, because um, West Tech took no exceptions to the technical specifications. Um, that's correct. And, and ESI provided a, an extensive list correct. of expectations or accepts. We did exceptions. note that um, West Tech acknowledged in their bid that they included state sales tax. Um, right. This is a tax exempt project. Correct. So we made a recommendation that as part of the negotiation process, which is completely consistent with Chapter 30B uh, requirements, Deerfield would, would, would negotiate that sales tax out of the price prior Correct. to so it'll execution come, of the, uh, the agreement. And come back down. Correct. Okay. And it's a, about 12 grand, you know, 6.25% right. 6, 6 of, you know, 213. Yeah. So it's, it's not helpful. overwhelming, but it's a little bit for sure. Yes. Definitely helpful. And that number for what it's worth is within what we carried for the allowance of the replacement clarifier mechanism itself, so. Okay. Um, well, I would entertain a motion to authorize signature of that um, to move ahead with West Tech's bid. I would, I would make that motion um, to, have, to authorize you with West Tech. Sure. Of course. Eric Brown, South Deerfield. I'm crossing out here. Make sure. I just want to. What was the price? The total price for the work? Two thirteen. And what was the design cost? Well, the, the part is two thirteen. The design just, cost. This is just the part. That right. We have, so it's two thirteen for the construction. What was the design cost? No, the two thirteen is not the construction. Two thirteen is the part, the clarifier that's going in the mechanism. The design cost one thirty seven. Okay. So what's the total cost for the clarifier repair? We don't have those bids yet. Okay, so this wasn't. For, this isn't for the the actual work. Correct. Okay, just want to clarify. Yep. It, this is just the equipment. Yeah, it was a little confusing. So we haven't. Has that been let out for bid yet? Yes, it's out to bid, but we have not uh, collected the bids. The bids deadline's not passed yet. Okay, thank you. Sure. I um, make, so I make that motion. Any further discussion? Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, you forgot the second. Oh, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you, Dave, for doing that. Thank you. Um, Great. So, um, we can do the review of the ADA coordinator and review of notice. We can do that at the end. Okay, we'll do that at the end. Perfect. Okay, so really um, tonight is just to kind of hear, again, hear from the public what other questions you may have before vote on Monday. Um, I can give you a little bit of update. I was lucky enough to, um, or we are lucky enough to sign the um, commitment letter with USDA last Thursday, was it? Yay! So um, that was a very interesting process. Um, I really wasn't sure what to expect when you, when you go in there, but um, there's an amazing team behind uh, this project for our town. Uh, USDA does not dole out a lot of money um, to just anybody. Uh, they've done an extensive of amount of work um, on behalf of Deerfield looking at our project, working with the engineers to make sure that the engineering is in line with what they would expect on a project of this, this sky, the size and scope. Um, again, this is, uh, this is a grant and a loan for phase one of the project, which is not phase one and phase three, the 19 million that was um, asked for at town meeting and authorized. It's, it's actually for 11, 11 point something million for the first part of the major needs of that plant. So we still have to decide, do, you know, do we want to continue and as was discussed to move forward with a $19 million project or really just move forward with the first phase that we have the, the financing for. So that's a decision still to be made. Um, but there's, um, there's a great, a great um, amount of staff there and uh, oversight. Um, they really want to help the town. They have a lot of other um, entities to USDA that can help us in this process. Um, I, I just love to see us move forward with that, um, with this project, because to, to have USDA provide that kind of help to us um, of $2.6 million, a little over $2.6 million on an $11 million project, you know, about 20% of the job. Um, it's, it's significant, and I think, you know, from what I gathered talking with Rebecca Strom there is that, you know, USDA is looking for a partner. So this isn't the only time we hope that they will um, continue with us if we, you know, if we appear to be and are a, um, a, a great client, a great partner in this process, um, they, will, they will go after more money for us for, for the other phases of the project that we have to do, you know, the other 19 million or, or any other projects we need in town. We have I&I &I work, we have another whole plant to work on. Um, so I think with their background and their, um, they've done hundreds of these projects around New England, um, with their oversight, they're looking at this, you know, as Rebecca said, this is their money too. So they're very concerned about how it gets spent, you know, cost of engineering, schedule, layout. They've gone through all of all the stuff that, that um, Dave Prickett's teams put together and, and on all the work that Barb and Brenda and everybody has done on behalf of the residents here in town to get this to a possibility where they could, they could provide money for us is um, it's fantastic. So um, I'm really thrilled about that, and they do plan to come with a, you know, a giant check that barely fit in the door for us. So I'm really looking forward to a Photoshop of that. Um, so really, I, I'd love to hear. So there's 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 that. We since the last meeting, there was discussion about kind of um, wanting to see, a, you know, schedule of what we plan to do, um, how, how it would get funded, what parts we would do first, what parts we would do next. Um, and kind of all the decision making, and you all have a handout, and we have large um, uh, documents printed out on the on those boards over there. But it's really kind of a where we've been and where we need to go, all the decisions that need to happen, um, and we'll go kind of around in a circle. And a lot of this, you know, as we go through the process, we might just hang out in a section of this chart for a while, as we circle through and ask for more funding, complete more stuff, decide whether we just want to do the first phase. Do we want to tackle the whole phase? How do we get more funding? And with USDA, it really the funding uh, I'm learning comes in, in yearly cycles. Massachusetts um, only gets $3 million from USDA for a project like this, for the whole state. So the way that we got 2.6, um, if we had tried to close this loan with them and grant process several months back, which I was hoping to do, so I had something to tell you all, um, we would have gotten a, a loan. And, and that would have been great, but they would have had no money for us. So what they do is, at the end of the year, um, because in Massachusetts there's other more needy um, uh, 
communities that have more pressing problems, that's generally where the grant money goes. At the end of the year, they look across the nation and they, what's called pooling the money. If anything's left over from different projects all across the nation, they take a little bit from here and there and figure out where they can backstop some of these projects. And they worked really hard. Rebecca worked really hard and their team um, worked very hard to try and gather some of that money for us. And um, it's not lost on me how hard that was to get, to get 2.6 million for us for this project in our community with our means. So I'm um, really excited about that. And um, so we'll, we'll kind of keep, I'm hoping to be a great partner with them and then have them keep sending their money our way. So we'd love to spend it on the project. So. Um, so again, we, we've got charts here, and then obviously you saw the, um, the kind of a schedule of what we've done in orange and what we still have to do as this project goes out throughout the years of construction, and then kind of the, you know, what's funded in the plant per color, you know, based on the first bid, first phase one, and, and the next phase, which was phase three. Um, and then, of course, you saw this chart, too, was how much it would cost to do this stuff. So. Um, I'd love to hear from anybody if they have any questions on the process, the, um, the grant project. Um, you're all here, so you must have some questions. Anybody? Please, thank you. Yeah, come on up. Uh, you can stand or sit at the table and just tell us who you are and what we can do. Hello. Hi. So I'm Joanne Dickinson, and I'm from the new condos. Welcome. And I was back here 2016, 17, when we were trying to get that um, approved. Yeah. And guess what? I love my home. I'm glad. And I love that whole condo um, group. So yes. yay. I'm so yes. glad that finally happened. I didn't know this was happening, mm -hmm. so I missed the other meeting yep. and all I have is some of the paperwork I got from the selectmen sure. would you be able to go over just a little bit yeah on Wh wh what's how we got happening here? sure yeah. and what is happening and this vote and yes, what absolutely. that all means sure sure okay so um gosh I don't know how far to go back so uh <laughs> we've been yeah, brief. So many, uh, for many years, we've been looking at the needs of the sewer project in town. Um, it's been studied for over a decade. Many different engineering firms have come, well, not, several engineering firms have come together and looked at what our needs are, and they change over the years. But our plant was built in the 70s. Um, there was some upgrades done in the 80s with a new clarifier, a circular clarifier, and some other um, sludge, sludge control stuff. Um, but nothing's been done since then. So uh, other, other than you know, minor repairs that we can do in our operations budget, um, the, the major needs that ha um, haven't been addressed. There's so much that's changed in technology. Um, one of the major issues is a headworks program, a headworks building and a, a mechanism. And really what that means is um, our residents, unfortunately, f and I'll say again, please don't flush wipes, uh, flush a lot of wipes and dental floss down the toilet. Uh, or however it, it gets into the system yeah. and um, it, it wreaks havoc. It blocks up everything. It wraps around our aerators, which are the big fans that kind of blow oxygen down. It gets stuck in our pumps, our wastewater treatments. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, beautiful stuff. So um, it gets stuck in, in all kinds of pumps and grinders and um, it gets hung up on cables, you name it, any, any part of the system. And, and depending on the amount of rain, it gets flushed all the way through the system right out to the river if we can't catch it all. Um, our clarifier, which is the, uh, so the process, how it works is you have a, he you, normal plants have a headworks to catch all that stuff ahead of time. We don't have that. We have a little grinder that kind of grinds it up a little bit, doesn't do a very good job. But our oils and fats wind up in, the, in that. That should be clear. Uh, pretty clear, maybe a little bit on the edge, but there's a ton of stuff that oils, fats, grease, um, um, wipes, you know, hypodermic needles, you name it, kind of gets in the system. So the Headworks will, system will, um, will trap that stuff out of there, waste it before it gets through the system. Uh, right now, if we get a heavy rain, all that stuff flushes through our system, gets into the aerator, which puts oxygen in and the bugs are in there to, to, to do their job. Then it gets pushed through into the clarifier where that is an area where the water should settle and anything kind of should settle out of the water and make it clean. It's called a clarifier, so it kind of settles down. 
Um, anything that's heavy gets to the bottom and pumped back for a reprocessing. Um, the clear stuff w will go into a treatment tank with chlorine. Um, so chlorine gas gets mixed with the water and then it's out to the river. So if we have a really heavy flow, all that stuff can get pushed all the way through. Um, so it's, it's very difficult for our um, operators to kind of maintain all that. So the goal is really a headworks. Um, the expense here is the headworks to clean that stuff out of there, a building to house that, because in, in our neck of the woods, you need a building because it gets really cold. Everything freezes up, so we need to make sure it stays, stays um, you know, moving along. And then um, we would love to change the way we do the aeration. Right now, the, the thing that spins on the top, it's an aerator. It's a big fan that blows um, oxygen and air down into the tank to feed the, the bugs. That's a really um, antiquated system, and it, it sucks more electricity than anything else in town especially when all the rags get wiped around it. So the idea is to kind of get rid of that system and do more of like a, you'd see in a fish tank, a bubbler. Bubble it up through a lot less electricity, use it, you get oxygen further down into the tank. Um, and then uh, once it passes there, our clarifier, which is the emergency repair, we kind of just signed off on the mechanism tonight, um, that would be, um, our, our, a couple years ago, our clarifier, um, froze up. It's a big circular thing and it's got an arm that goes around, just skims the top. And uh, we lost power for a bit of time. Ice built up around the edge and as soon as the power came back on, the arm hit the ice and bent it below the water. So it doesn't skim and you can see all the fats just kind of get blown right into their system. That should be clear. Um, so once, once we were fixing the clarifier for one, we have no other backup clarifier. So what's making this repair really expensive is that we need to bring in a whole separate clarifier on the back of a truck and do a, a kind of a bi heart bypass. So we're gonna fix that, you know, try to treat that while we can, so we can still meet permit while we take the guts out of our only clarifier. Most every other plant around has a secondary clarifier. So we're gonna fix that. The other part of the repair is to put in a secondary clarifier. So we have duplicate. We could run one for a while, run the other one for a while. Also to get covers on them so they don't freeze. Build up the walls a little higher so they stay warmer. The covers will keep all the leaves and the junk out from getting in the clarifier. So a lot of upgrades, a lot of new stuff. Um, Want to get rid of the chlorine because the chlorine is not safe. It's one of the things DEP has kind of hit us with is that we don't have the mechanisms and the um, equipment in place if there was a, a problem with a chlorine gas leak. Um, so it's a, it's a safety hazard. So we want to get rid of the chlorine and move more towards a U, UV light. So UV uh, light would disinfect before it goes into the river. It's a lot safer. Um, there's still some maintenance with it, and you know each has its own benefits. But we think in the long run it'll be safer for our our employees and for everybody to not have chlorine uh, treating it before it goes into the river. So those are, and then there's also sludge. Um, how, sludge is kind of the kind of the bugs at the end, you can get an excess and you want to get rid of all that sludge. Um, we, ours is mixed with a bunch of trash right now and it costs us a ton of money to get rid of it. We have to tr truck it to Rhode Island, Rhode Island or somewhere. To, it's yeah. Lowell right now um, and it's a fortune. It's one of the most expensive parts other than the electricity to, um, to operate the plant is the, is the sludge um, disposal. So our idea is once we get this kind of up to speed and um, better technology, We'll have a lot. We'll get a lot of, rid of a lot of trash. We'll also be um, dewatering or getting rid of a lot of excess um, sludge. Um, the sludge will be a better content or a better mix to get rid of. It'll cost us less, less to get rid of. So we'll save money operationally there. Um, this is kind of a reader's digest of it, of it all, but that's kind of what we want to tackle there. We again, we have a second plant is in just the same shape. We, you know, we want to tackle that at some point, but this is our workhorse. This does 75% of our town. Um, a lot of our industry is on this plant, and we're, you know, the, all the electrical would be brought up to speed. A lot of the it's electrical really is in really bad shape. The electrical contractors are really, you know, don't have parts for this stuff anymore, are worried about it failing. Once that, if we don't have any electricity or any way to run the plant, it, there's no treatment. So, so that's my biggest fear is some night that fails. and. You know, it's months to fix it. I don't know how you, you know, fix that in a fast way. Maybe there's a quick fix in the meantime, but we want to bring all that up to current technology, looking for the future. Um, so, you know, so our younger generation is not stuck with this 
with a major catastrophe or um, you know a big expense. We just want to get more efficient, better, um, and, and using USDA as a partner and grant money and a, and a loan, which is a big part of this, our loan for financing is two and an eighth percent, which is a poverty rate, which is really a great rate if you're gonna do a project and it's for 40 years. So I can't think of a better time financially um, with technology, with the partners we have in place to tackle this project. It's like now is the time to do it. We've got good partners, good, good plan in place. You know, there's still some things to figure out how much we're gonna do um, when we're going to do it. So there's, it's a big project and it's complex, but it'll take a while to, um, to nail all that down. But we have a plan for it and a good team to make that you know, plan, implement that plan. So we're hoping for that support to get moving on that. So, so what's the goal? So great. So back at town meeting, annual town meeting, um, we, we really weren't sure the total cost of this, but if we had combined the first grant phase, which is 11, some 11 million or so and then uh, the topics through conversations were well if the guys are already there why don't we do everything that's needed at that plant when we first did the assessment which is about 30 million dollars to fix all of our maybe a little bit more than that to fix our whole system all the piping and the both plants um, the plan originally was to fix all the major needs in South Deerfield go to the old Deerfield plant fix all the major needs then come back and fix this and then go back and fix the final stuff. We felt like, well, why don't we just tackle everything in one spot first, get it done so that plant's up to speed, Cheaper. then decide what we're gonna do with the other plant. Um, so that, that kind of budget was around 19 million with, with like a, a large contingency. We weren't sure what we were gonna do. So I just said, well, okay, I'll take $19 million. I'll take it to the townspeople at town meeting and say, we're not quite sure, but this is about the outside edge of what we think we'd do um, to fix this. And it passed overwhelmingly at town meeting, but it passed on the contingent that it would be uh, a debt excluded vote. So, um, which means that um, instead of us raising taxes forever to pay for this project, um, it would be outside of our taxes, like we did with our school roof or most, most large infrastructure projects that the town would take on are usually debt excluded so they're, they're specifically spent on one item and once that's paid off and, the, and the, the borrowing and all the interest is paid off on that one project it comes off the books it doesn't stay our rate doesn't stay at that high amount um, so we felt like it was um, prudent to do that and and it gave people a vote in town other than town meeting it gave everybody a chance to come out and vote um, there was uh, maybe miscommunication, a lot of people didn't come out, maybe people just felt like they didn't want to support it, but it failed on, in June uh, by 37 votes. 32. So, 32 votes. So um, that was really unfortunate. So we, uh, I, I felt like we all felt we should go back again, we should take these months. 11% turnout. Uh, we had 11% turnout. You know, it, it just, we need more people to, it's a big, issue and it affects everybody. So the idea was that we would take those months to educate people more, educate ourselves more, hopefully get a loan and a grant from USDA. All of that's happened and that's why kind of this night was the last night before the vote to kind of explain where we've been, where we're going, um, try to make people at ease that we have a plan and we, we, we want your help moving forward. So. Um, so that's kind of where that was. So I'm hoping that we get a positive vote on, on Monday and then, and then we'll kind of continue down the path of still coming to the public and telling people what we're doing. And um, we have a lot more work to do and a lot more discussions and votes to take in the future. But this would get us on the path and it would allow us to be a partner with USDA to try to get more money in the future and have all their help during a project like this. So be Yep, good question. So we would have a choice then. Do we call another? I mean, the school kind of went the same way when we did the elementary school. Um, five votes. Five town meeting, five town meeting votes. It's expensive. It delays the amount of cost, but we would decide to probably have another town meeting, get approval, and at that point, we'd either decide whether to do a debt exclusion or not debt exclusion. I still think it's the right thing to do. I think financially it's the right thing to do. We would just keep at it. The problems are still gonna be there. They're only gonna get more expensive. And um, I'm afraid if we wait too long, we won't have the money from USDA and we'll still have to fix it. So I don't see a better alternative other than, oh. Well, if we have a fine. If we have a problem, some, okay. When we have a problem, uh, if, you know, 
God forbid the power goes out and we, you know, we, we're missing permit, water's pumping in and we don't have any way to fix it. DEP can fine us $10,000 a day. So in a very short amount of time, we're eating up any kind of help we'd get from the USDA. We're, um, the project's still gonna be just as expensive if not 4% every year that you don't do it. So I think the time is now to kind of narrow down on that. Um, you know, be as efficient as we thoughtful. can, thoughtful as we can. We have plan, we have time, we have partners to get this project right. Um, I just don't want to do it being forced to. So, I mean, we're somewhat forced to because, you know, here we are, we need it. But, um, but there's a lot of thought going into it. We have some time to plan that out. So I think, I think you know, as leaders of the town, we think this is the most, um, most important issue facing the residents, our business, our businesses count on it, our schools count on it. Um, it, you know, it, it's a huge infrastructure thing and it's not something we can ignore any longer. We have to, we have to address it. So uh, we would keep going back at it. That's what we would do. We just keep doing it until we can find, find a way to make it happen because it has to. One more question. Sure. Yep. Yeah. What percentage of Deerfield is septic and what percentage is sewer? Yes. Um, somebody may be able to help me with that, but there's probably, I would say 30% might be on sewer and 70 percent probably septic users and then i guess maybe a, what's that we just have about how many homes roughly well we have there's, there's about 880 homes that are on it there's about 3200 households yeah total and, total and so and one of the other things i would talk about is kind of how we got to why 75 25 split so back in the 30s when this um you know, before we had any way to pump this stuff out of our town, I don't know what we did before that, but whether it was in the streets or what, but in the 30s, we decided to put in pipes um, to get this stuff to the river before we had a treatment plant. So it just kind of went out to the river and that was how it was. Um, to, when, when the town decided to do that, the residents of the town um, asked for leg state legislation that, that whatever expenses for the sewer um, would be born 75, up to 75% by the, um, well, up to 25%, but excuse me, let me get this right. It was split 75% by the sewer users and, and um, anybody that was, uh, had it going in front of their house, anybody that's on the system, they would pay 75% of infrastructure bills and operations, that's what it says, and then, um, and then 25% would be by the general fund, the general taxpayers. Everybody would pay their 25%. Um, and it was 25% it was up to, I think, two thirds. Two -thirds. I, I think right. two thirds. So the, the town could decide. If the sewer users had no f way to do it, the town could take on two thirds of that debt. But we, the town had decided in the, in the 30s that it would be 25 and 75. And that's kind of how it's, how it's been set, although. I don't think we've really ever followed that. Um, it's really the sewer users have paid for most most things over the years, or it's been grants. I mean, the, it, when EPA was formed in the 70s, I believe that plant was paid for by a grant. And I, probably the upgrades that were done in the 80s were paid for by a grant, so. And the 25% is through to, to the entire tax, you know, taxpayers. So, you know, the sewer users are paying an additional amount on top of the 75. Right. Yep. Ava. Hi, my name is Ava Gibbs. I live on River Road, and I'm, I'm a septic user. So, yeah, and I had a letter in, in the recorder. Is this on, by the way? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Um, one thing that I didn't get, I didn't understand until uh, I really looked at it in order to write that letter, I just want to say again what you've said, but maybe I'll say it in my way, okay? okay. There is a mass confusion between sewer fees and taxes, okay? The sewer fees is what the sewer uh, people are going to have to pay uh, all of it. And that is right now $64 for an average sewer user. Of course, that's based on your water use, so you could actually lower that by, you know, being much more sustainable. That is a possibility. That is definitely, uh, mm -hmm. to, it can be lowered. That's, a, that's a, um, a sewer fee. Then 
what is the 7525 is taxes, and we're all going to pay those taxes. Okay? That, that is every, the sewer users and the septic users are going to pay that. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's the increases that Lily just put up. So I think that that's what we have to constantly remember. There's sewer fees, mm -hmm. and then there's taxes. And the 7525, correct me if I'm wrong, is on the taxes. Correct. It is not on the sewer fees. Right. And they have been very low, sorry, but they were very low, the sewer users, for a sewer fees for many, many years. And now yeah. they're, you can look on the chart there that they were way under what the state I don't even know what the words are, but like what? Average. Average, okay. So now they're, they're going to be within those guidelines. So um, I, just, I, I need to say that because there is a vast confusion, again, between taxes, which is a 75, 25% and sewer you fees. And you can lower it by being more sustainable, which is what we want after all. In my, in my house, with my septic, I'm very careful what I do with my septic, and I'm very careful what I do with my water, because we have a water problem in my house. So, you know, I'm very careful with all that, even though I don't pay for it monthly. So thank you very much. If thank you, you have Ava. any other questions, I'd be glad to yeah. talk to you after the meeting. So I, oh, go ahead, please. Hi. Come on up. Come on up. To, yeah, just so people on TV can hear. Oh. Yep. Thank Mary you. Mary Ellen Sloan. I live on Porter Street in South Deerfield. Thank I am you. a... Uh, sewer user, yes. so I'll be taxed and paying yes. the fees. Correct. And I have a few questions about sure. um, the process for, it says here, the public bidding process. Yep. Is that written out? Do we have a minimum amount of bids that we will be needing before we move forward? Who will be yeah. assessing the bids? Great Who idea. will be yep. um, assessing the value of each bid? Correct. What is that yep. process? So. Um, we would follow the same process we're using for our clarifier repair. So we have a working group right now that meets, and that is um, Chair of our Finance Committee. I'm a member. Um, Diane has been on. Uh, Mike, Mike is on. Kevin, our head of our DPW, is on. Keith, um, who is our chief operator, is on that. Um, and then we have our engineers at the table as well. And now uh, we'll have USDA at the table. So they have their engineers and their, their um, implementation people there looking at all of that as well. So we would, yes, it would go out to bid. Um, um, maybe Dave could talk to this. I don't bid as much <laughs> as, as other people in the room, but um, maybe Dave could talk to a little bit to the process of that. But we would. Well, actually, that's my question. Is, are we all in with Dave, or will we be looking that, at that? That decision hasn't been made yet. Um, USDA, um, when I spoke to them about whether we would go out to bid for an engineer or not, I said we hadn't made that decision. They said, well, you can do that, but I've worked for the last um, five months with Dave Prickett to get their cost down and, and get it in line with our project. And if you want to go out and spend the money to have another engineer come in because they're not going to use any of the existing stuff, they're going to have to reassess the whole thing again. So you're going to have another year of study or however long that takes, six months of study and then pay that engineer to produce another assessment um, and decide how they'd want to go forward. I think, I think you know, we could take that step if we wanted to. Uh, USDA said they're not interested in paying that bill, so that would be up, up to us to do. So we could certainly go and do that again. No decision has been made yet. Okay, and did we have other? Yes. Yeah, come, come on back up and continue. I know we had two bids for the sewer study, but yes. did we have other, other input before well, we... Well, when you do an assessment, you assess your, your, your plant. We, picked, we had two people apply. Um, Respond. Responded to that to that For bid. the sewer study. Right, and that, that was to give us an assessment, and, and then we felt to get a plan forward in that assessment is an implementation plan which hasn't been finalized because we're waiting to see how the vote goes. Did we get a grant? Mm -hmm. How much we can tackle? So um, Dave Prickett's been with our, with our town and the engineers even longer than <laughs> Dave Prickett, I think, some of the engineers. So they're very involved in the project and, and know everything about our plant. So um, we could decide to go out and get another assessment and another decision to do that, to do that um, 
engineering work, or we could decide to um, you know, bid out just, just for our specific scope of work that we want to do, but we would have to work with our, we would have to have a team get together and write a scope of work. Um, I feel very comfortable with where we're at at the moment, but um, no decision's been made whether we want to go out and get another bid. I think a lot of that assessment's been done by USDA, um, and they feel very comfortable with the numbers that we have based on their, you know, hundreds and hundreds of projects in, in the field. So. Um, I'm not sure what that would buy us at, the, at this time to go out and get another assessment, another bid. Um, well, typically when I have work done, I, I look for more than one. So to my understanding so, is we have a yeah, there's single. Yeah, there's a different, so okay. all the project is going out to bid. So the construction, um, all the, the materials, everything goes out to bid. So but it's, not the engineering. Correct. Engineering, with engineering, you don't have to, one. You, could, you can pick just one. Uh, we could stay with the one we've been working with all along, or we could decide to upend it and go out and have somebody else do it. Okay, yes. but at this point, the we plan haven't made is that decision. To, Correct. To, so we're planning on we're we're basing a thirty or nineteen or something around their million dollar project using the input of one well, engineering. Firm. I would kind of push back on that because Weston and Sampson did one ten years ago that told us the same thing. We have, you know, we've had multiple assessments. It's not like we need somebody to come and tell us what we have to do again. We know what we have to do. So we've had multiple people look at this project multiple times, and I think I feel pretty comfortable where we're at. We know it was what we need to unanimous. do. pretty unanimous. Yeah. Um, I mean, that Stantec what was, that was not the name of that choice? firm? Stantec was the yes, second firm. Was the second that was firm. 10 years ago? No, oh, no, no, Weston no. and Sampson was the first one. Okay. We were engineers at Weston and Sampson at the time 10 years ago. Um, I wasn't there. Yeah. I'd have to, you'd have to pull out the reports, Eric, because I can't remember. He may have but been there, but I don't know if he did it. We had, regardless. we had the sewer committee, and we had the select that board. That would mean longevity, Eric, right? Um, it's and it's knowledge. Different, different companies, same engineer. Yeah, if you've got something to say, come up to the, and say something. We had Stantec and, and um, Dave Prickett's firm, uh, uh, you know, con um, apply for the engineering. And, and we interviewed them, and it was pretty much a unanimous choice to go with Dave Prickett. He's got the knowledge. I've looked at all of his references. I've talked to many people that have worked with him. Um, their projects come in on time, and the, the people are very happy with them. Um, all the, you know, the budgets are very accurate. Everything that they've laid out for us over the last several years has been right, right on par. Um, they've, they've been very instrumental in getting us 2.6 million. Um, they've done all the work, um, everything that we've done, all the knowledge, all the help with the fog stuff. I mean, I, the, West, the, um, the work up at the um, Captain Lathrop pump station, they've been very involved with our town. So um, there's a level of trust and knowledge in, in what they know they're doing. Uh, I feel very comfortable with them. So um, I'm not inclined to go get somebody else, but I'm only one person. So. It's up, it's up to, you know, it's up to the group. Was Dave Brackett's firm compensated for all of that work thus far, or it's uh, There's still some bills out on... hanging out, and there's actually stuff they've done they aren't going to get compensated for. But it's not contingent on what we do moving not. forward? Nope, not at okay. all. Okay. Yep. These are all separate contracts that they've done. And I do think that that's why you're seeing some of the no votes, is there's mm -hmm. some concern about uh, just the one, just the one engineering firm, and we're basing a lot of this on that well what would so the engineering firm is going to tell us what like they're going to tell us we need a head works they're going to tell us we need another clarifier we need to get rid of the chlorine i mean i don't want to pay somebody else to tell me what we already know and what we've been told for 10 years they've been telling us over and over and over and now the dep is course. coming down with a hammer and saying you need to do this and and so i don't want to i really don't want to spend time having another person and paying that bill to tell me i've got to do the same thing over again and it would have no impact on the estimate of the cost. Correct. Actually, the cost the, would go up because construction is 4 to 5% increase yearly. We, we've been dragging our feet on this yeah. as, as a town for you know, more than a decade. And we need to move forward. And I think we have a good plan. We have a good partner in USDA to look over all of that stuff. They're not, it's their money. They're not going to get hosed either. I mean, they've, they've looked and they've adjusted and they moved things to contingency. They've, They've done a lot of work. There's a lot of work behind the scenes on looking at this engineering. Um, 
I really want to get to the bids. What's the project going to cost? Who the contract is going to be? All of that stuff is really important. And do we have a minimum amount of bids that we, we would take we, before we move forward? Of course, yeah. We would, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we did with the clarifier. Yeah. We, we only got two in, but we would take, we'll take as many as it come. Yeah. And, and if it's not satisfactory, we'll go out to bid again. Um, it's got to be affordable. I mean, it's got to be reasonable. Okay. Thank you. For the work. Eric? Yeah, I just and want then to add to, to clarify because um, there's some misconceptions. Um, it wouldn't cost any more money to put it out to bid. They could use the uh, other report, and I know this because I do this for a living. You could take this scope of work at zero cost because you put it together and you give it to their, their, their you know, assessment, which you paid for. You give it to a designer, and they would put it together at no cost. I know this because I got a quote for the clarifier repair, if you remember, and I got it within two weeks, and it cost me nothing. Right. So there is actually no cost to put it out to bid for well, engineering. USDA told us that, that no engineer worth their weight is going to base a bid and, and, and on, their, on somebody else's work. I'm just telling you there's no cost to it. They'll come in and do their own assessment, but if right. you're going to put and it out to bid, wait for that? It's, it's actually cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. Engineers, contractors, they build it into their budgets and their operating costs to lose about 90% of what they're bidding in, in big work, and this is bigger work. So um, I guess my question, while I'm up here, since we're looking, you already made your decision using Dave Prickett. Um, I haven't made that decision. Well, it seemed like you had made I, the other folks. I am in right, favor, but right. this board is so not So how many decision. engineers does, does Dave Prickett have? I haven't asked about Well, I'm asking no. Dave Prickett. How many engineers do you have? Just a number. If you'd like to. We have 10 employees. 10 employees. How many of them are licensed in maths? Everyone that has the sufficient time is licensed in Massachusetts. We have five engineers on staff. So how many are licensed? Uh, four of them. So you have four licensed engineers on staff. Okay. And how many, what's, your, what's the estimated cost for this work? I don't have that number in front of me right now. I'm well, not sure yeah. your question is there. The estimated cost for the $19 million project. We don't have a $19 for million dollar project yet. For engineering. It, it includes uh, construction, contingency, and engineering. Just the engineering cost. So I, I don't have that. I, on the breakdown, I didn't see the engineering on the $19 million. It wasn't broken out separately. So, actually, 15 would be excessive, but yeah, 10 percent. It's not excessive. So, so you're looking at billing anywhere from two to three million dollars? Is that what we're talking about for engineering? We haven't got there yet, Eric. Eric, we haven't. We haven't I'm, I'm just we asking the at. question. The point being, you're, you're talking asking about leading questions, Eric, that don't really make any sense because okay, we haven't so, picked a so project. Okay, so so it's 10 to 15 percent. Just don't interrupt him. Don't interrupt each other. Okay, thank you. So, three million dollars is, is is 10 or 15 percent, two to three million dollars. I would think that. That's a big number. I'd want to get some quotes on that. I guess that's all okay. I'm saying. There and, you go. Um, you know, but thank you. There you go. Uh, you're, you had a question next. Can I respond to of course something you can. before, Thanks. real quick? Uh, yep. Not, not the comments about DPC, but just um, when we did the planning phase evaluation, I think one of the things, and I, I think this might have been mentioned at the spring town meeting, there were four past studies in the last 20 years that the Town of Deerfield commissioned by four different consultants. Yes. When you looked at the time value of money at the years that each of those four projects were done, the recommendations for those four different projects across 20 years were almost identical. Right. So four different consultants, different size, different backgrounds, different opinions, have concluded the same things. This is not rocket science relative to what the deficiencies are, and you summarized them very well before. It's an old plant. It lacks redundancy. It has highly inefficient equipment from an electrical O&M safety uh, provision. So it was literally just, I just wanted to point out that those four projects, uh, this wasn't one opinion. This was that of four different consultants over the last 20 years. So. 20 years. I'm yep. sorry to interrupt whomever yep. was stepping up. Thank you, Dave. My name is Jean Reese. I'm a new resident in the Sugarloaf Condominiums. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Happy I'm to have you. Freshly here, just a month. <laughs> uh, I have a scheduling question and a funding question. Okay. So Try. on your big spreadsheet that goes out to December of 2022. Yeah. Is that? Do I assume that that is for um, assuming there are no major hurdles? Everything on Monday proceeds favorably and the project proceeds yeah. this is for 11.4 million correct 
just the first phase. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And then it yep. will continue on to the full project, right. assuming approvals happen along the way. Exactly. We okay. would have to look for other funding, and um, yes, and that, and then so the calendar may fill up a little bit more and stretch out more if we're doing more of the work. But yes, that's sure. one's based just on, I believe, just on the 11 million. Yep. Okay. And my second question is, what happens if the town is not able to secure the necessary funding? Well, we, is that possible? It is possible. Uh, part of you know this this vote Monday would be. I mean, two two point six million is a huge uh, right. help for us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we we can fund this project regardless. It, it was just it's going to be okay. you know would need higher taxes or more user fees or you know one way or the other we're going to have to do this and 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 pretty soon by by force. Um, but. I, I think we would keep going back, and I, th I think this is the most affordable way to, to move forward. Um, a lot of planning has been put into that, and, and we still have a lot of planning to do to kind of figure out, okay, when are we going to get a bond, how many bonds are we going to do, and you know, all, there's a lot of work with bond council to figure out when we do right. that, when the <laughs> bills are going to hit. And so we all want to kind of stretch that out and then and look for other help. You know, there's other help in town that we're hoping to uh, secure, and you know, a lot of planning going forward on the other plant. So. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do on a, on a lot of that. But okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming. Denise Boudreaux, South Mill River Road. Um, I just want to know. Um, I mean, everybody has their area of expertise. Sure. Who for the town mm -hmm. is the sewer expert to yep. to handle? all of this great great question so Keith Millen is our engineer I mean our uh, operator so he's he's been working in the industry about 20 years or so and he knows a lot of what we're doing um, has a lot of input on that you know we hire engineers to be an expert for us as well uh, Kevin's been working on this system for a very long time and is our you know head of our DPW um, we have now a partner in USDA with a whole you know but a few engineers and a whole bunch of expertise to help us as well. And then at some point we would decide whether we would do a, a clerk of the works to look at, you know, um, somebody to come in and help day to day stuff. But, um, and then we have our working group to kind of get together. And, and there are people in town that we could pull on f for help too. I think uh, people have offered to help, you know, guide us through this, this process. So oh. I feel like we're pretty, pretty good shape. Why, why aren't they sitting up there answering the questions? Oh, right. great question. And, yeah. You know, I know, yeah. Like I said, no. no disrespect. Oh, I, I don't mind. You can disrespect me all you want. But, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, I it's a great. It would need a lot more. Yep. Heard from people that are experts in it. That's a great point, and we've had Dave do a lot of Dave and his team, um, James and Tony do a lot of presentations in the past, and we kind of felt like well, I was trying to. Um, you know, if it felt like the engineer was trying to sell the project, it's probably not a good idea. So I thought I would take as much knowledge as I had and put it forward in layman's terms. But they're ready. If there was any questions that came from the audience, that's why all three came today to try and answer questions. And, you know, Kevin's here. If anybody has something that I couldn't answer, we would pull on that. Um, and, I mean, Jeff in the audience has been here for uh, on the um, sewer study committee before. There's other members. Kip has been on sewer study committee. So if people had questions, we thought we'd we'd ask from, you know, ask from them, pull, pull from that. There's a couple knowledge. people in town that have background and expertise, and that and that it is their job to operate um, plants. And right, but I mean, are they, you know, to have somebody sitting up there that is representing the um, the town well. to discuss. <laughs> it, but I'm talking. I mean, I'm talking about somebody that I, I know you're yeah. well versed in this and everything, sure. but do we have a sewer commissioner like we have a water commissioner? We are the sewer commissioner. You are the sewer commissioner. Right. So the way so. the structure of the town works is you have a select men, our select people, mm -hmm. uh, three of us, and we are. Uh, with small towns, we wear a ton of hats, but sewer commissioner is one of those. So we set the rates for people. We look at you know the cost, you know, with the finance committee and you know, capital improvement planning committee, what expenses are coming out there. We try to kind of figure out where our rates need to be for the year so we have enough funding to operate the plant. And then this project has been going on for quite a few years with different committees looking at this, coming up with ideas. You know, there's a, there's, um, Jack Baturik gave us some information on EDUs that came out of the, the sewer study committee. 
Um, so we were going to look at that. So there's yeah. a lot of information that's come from a lot of different places, and we kind of compile it together, and, and we, we lean on our engineers to help tra you know, translate some of that stuff. I talk to David, if not daily, a couple times a week, um, just trying to get answers on this stuff, and then working with USDA to get answers from them on things. Um, but yeah, we have, we have a good staff of people looking at this stuff. I mean, Keith is brilliant, you know, he, he, he has a lot of experience running that plant. So if there's anything we don't know, um, we, we, we know where to go to ask, especially, you know, now we have USDA as well. They've, they've got a ton of experience in this stuff. I, I also think that um, the information sheet, instead of just writing the firm, that I think people would like to know who the who firm they are. is. Yes, it, yep, the pe you mean the people and, and their background and stuff on oh, the firm? Just to know what the name of DPC David. is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, David Prickett Engineering. Yeah. I've read all articles online and I haven't seen yeah. the name of the firm anywhere. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's online and it's in all these, all these mountains of books we have. So they're all up online. So they've got their name and address and phone number. And uh, come see me, I've got, I've got more, more paper than you can imagine. <laughs> so. Um, the great so, question, though. Great so question. We're a month out. Oh, can you come on up? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Speak loud enough. You can hear me. Yeah, but people at right. home can't. So, as I preached to you two last time about having a plan. Yeah. Much like you do in finance. Yeah. You do in this. Looking at this stuff. Yeah. We're about a month out from, according to this thing, establish a working committee. Mm -hmm. Who's on the working committee? Well, right now, it's, I did name them already. It's, it's me, Diana, Mike, Kevin, Keith, uh, our engineers. And not utilizing anybody in town. Well, you're, that you're hasn't some, been some decided yet. Yeah. I mean, we can pull, we we're can about, pull We're about a month out, and it says a establish month out a from October, October yeah. uh, 2019. Right. And we're three days out from finding out if we can do any of this. So. Okay. Because a lot of me, work to do. To me, this plan, this flow chart... I'm sure it's, it's never going to be good enough for everybody, but we're, we're trying. You know, I, you know, you know we I, all have I work other jobs. Every day. We and all this, do this. This stuff, it's not worth what I printed out on paper. Okay, so. well, that's your opinion. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Paul. Sharon. I'm Sharon Sister Sister Sherrick. I've just got a quick question about the engineer. Sure. Who decides on? Our engineer. The select board does. The select board. Yep. So the Ultimate. townspeople don't have a vote on that Correct. or a voice or anything. Correct. At this I take point. your input. Oh, yeah, we, we, we take, take your input, input all the time. time. Yeah. But we, we did. We had the committee choose um, Dave Prickett. Okay. Um, you know, the um, sewer was committee. That we had a joint of the meeting. sewer study committee that we yes. had. The sewer they, study committee and the select board had a, a meet, joint, joint meeting. meeting. Okay. And we had consensus. Um, that was my question because uh, we're talking about a lot of money here. Of course. And I just want to know, do the townspeople have a voice we in, in oh, who absolutely. our engineer is? It was taped. We pulled from our townspeople. It was, it was um, inter we interviewed, we, we interviewed both respondents. Okay. And, 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 we, Thank and you. it was a consensus. It was 100% consensus. Okay. I don't think anyone else had a um, differing opinion. Okay. Well, Do you remember? Um, maybe one just, or two. Maybe, I've maybe not one person, personally heard but, any other names out there, so that's why I'm yeah. asking the question. Well, like Dave said, there's been four firms in the last 20 years to, to look at this and tell us all the same thing yeah. that we need to get I mean, going on. I can stuff, look so. through the old reports. All right. I just wanted but, yeah, to clarify we'll still that there are some enough people money out there in the plan. asking that question. Yep. Sure. So, yep. thank we, you. We thank absolutely you. have to do something. And so. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. And thank John for dropping off the, um, the EDU, EDU stuff. information yep. that we can follow up on. How are you, Julie? Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie Chalfant, South Nova Road. Um, the $2.6 million from USDA, is that grant contingent on anything? It is, uh, and it's contingent on a positive vote from the town that we want to move forward. So, um, really, this vote Monday really makes a big difference. Um, we could then, if it failed, uh, we'd have to go back another means to try and find another positive vote somewhere. But um, really, yes, it is contingent on a working partner. They want a partner to work with us on this project and multiple projects in the for in the future. So, yes. 
So the vote on Monday is for the full 19 million, not... No, not the vote on out. Monday is not for any amount of money. It's not for 19 million or 11 million or anything. All it is, all that's doing is saying that whatever project we undertake at the sewer plant, it's going to be debt excluded. So it, it's not a dollar amount. That dollar amount vote was at town meeting. It passed 98%. So this vote Monday has nothing to do with dollars. It really just means that those dollars are not going to be, um, they're going to be selected just for that sewer project and it will be debt excluded. And once that's done, it comes off the rolls. So it could be, you know, 3 million or whatever we wind up doing there, which hasn't been settled on. USDA would like us to move forward with the 11 that they're, that they're giving us a loan on in the grant for. So that's really our, our primary focus. Um, the only reason 19 million came up is that Skip at one time had said, you know, and the, and the finance Skip committee was saying, our finance committee. Thing, look, if you're going to be there, it's only going to get more expensive every year. Why don't we tackle everything at one shot? That's why I asked for 19 million originally. We always went out for 11 for the, for the grant and the loan, because that's kind of what we knew at the time. Um, it's evolved a little bit since then, but we probably will start focusing on the 11, I mean, to begin with because we don't really have the funding for the other yet, so. Um, and also then there's hope that, that there will be additional infrastructure money down the line, mm -hmm. and then other grants. Once we decide to move forward, then we can parcel out some of the stuff. I mean, some of the things should be under green communities, you know, like solar improvement and, mm -hmm. you know, th that kind of stuff. But then our, we'll put under, we're having a meeting October 2nd um, to update our MVP program, which is the, municipal vulnerability preparedness program and we'll add in the tanks increasing the size sides of the tanks and then oh by the way we'll make sure we're lining them as well and fixing that the pit the pits and cracks and stuff so that you know we'll parcel that out it's not a huge uh, part of the i think it's like a few hundred thousand but it's a few hundred thousand it's not in the total right. and you know wherever and we hopefully can get grant money we, we will yeah, do that i mean we're we're going to look at it all and, and, and try to, you know, make sure that every part is funded somewhere else as much as possible. And the, but you can't even do that until we, you know, have the ability to say it's debt excluded because otherwise it's competing with, you know, our regular budget. All, and, which all is, that stuff. You're laying off, you know, because you got to pay for it somehow out of your operations budget. Mm -hmm. So, or and, and, and we just don't have, and, and truly there's not money because you know, our budget is close to 70% education, so you're operating the town on just about 30%. In that 30%, you're not gonna find the money to do the repairs. So it has to be some other way um, if you want services to continue. And USDA, you know, generally, it's right about this time that they look at pooling money from across the nation. So I don't expect that, you know, next year they'll say, you know, Massachusetts has three million to spend, and we're going to get that. Um, it's going to be more of a pooling money thing. And Rebecca at USDA is really looking at that and watching the calendar. And she's pretty experienced. So I think she, she's going to try to, you know, pull some other money at different phases to try and help and, us out. And, throughout and the part road. of this is that you build a relationship so that we can go back to her and say, look, the town is supporting this. And, and it makes more sense to us that we include that phase four, you know, and do everything at once. Oh, so now you you gave us 2.6 last year based on the, you know this 11 million first phase if we do everything it makes more sense and they'll say oh yeah right so here how about a partner. few more extra monies you know I, that's I mean, what we're hoping for we don't for. know <laughs> how much i mean it's you never really know you never know but it doesn't mean that we just don't we give up hustling just because you know, we have this thing. Nobody wants to spend money so you can flush the toilet. I can tell you I'm the number one person that is not interested. I would rather do our sidewalks oh, and so plant trees more. and all kinds of stuff. But we don't have a choice. So, And this does allow us to start implementing. this has been hanging over our head for years. And the dollars don't get any better. It, it so, allows us, you know, using USDA allows us to, you know, okay, that money is focused there. Then we can start looking at the other infrastructure projects, our complete streets projects and, you know, the buildings committee stuff that you're working on. And there's so much that we need to do. We've got, you know, a church building, a senior center building, this building. There's a lot to do. And as you guys are all working on really doing a great job on, by the way. Um, and so, yeah, it, 
Well, yeah, I, should, I was just going to say that. So um, just so everybody's in the room and hears and on TV, the Building Advisory Committee is doing a senior, uh, senior housing and senior study, uh, senior center um, kind of a, a seminar presentation at the Deerfield Elementary School on Saturday morning from 10 to 11. Um, and they have two presenters that are coming to talk about those needs and they're experts in the, in the field and they'll be um, doing a, a presentation each and then taking questions. So we'd really love to have you come. And then after that, when that's all finished and the questions are done, we'll have a, a complete streets kind of question and answer thing where we can hear from you of those pesky sidewalks that are bothering you or issue in town that's been we an issue in roads the sidewalks and done. you know all that kind of stuff we want to hear so we can get that on our prioritization list to implement so doing this project getting the help allows us time to work on the other things that are really important in town it's not all sewer trust me i'd love to put this you know get this in yeah. moving so yeah i have one Thank more you. comment sure I, um I have the same hesitation that I've heard a couple other people comment on in having one firm make the proposal and then do the work as well. Mm -hmm. And if it truly wouldn't cost more to put it out for bid, um, I would imagine that since you've done the background work, your bid's going to be lower than anybody else's, but it's worth finding that out. Mm -hmm. um, so it would seem reasonable to me that when you put it out for bid, you put the whole thing out for bid and just see what the results are. Thank you. Thanks. Please. Oh, wait. Uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. And then we've got one more after you. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. And, and oh. yeah, your question and then her. Um, yep. I just want to know why, why did it take this long for this <laughs> to be done? I mean, why? That's a great no question. No one, wants to spend the money. no one wants to spend the money. No one wants to spend the money. That's why it's so hard but to get a vote. has it always been brought up in the past? This yes. is the first I've ever heard of it. 20 years. 20 years. 25. It's 25 been years. Oh, we, we have an expert. 25 years. Do I hear 30? <laughs> please, yes, come up, please. Thank you. My name is Patricia. I live up on Upper Road. Up, sorry about that. Up, I live on Upper Road. Um, okay. Actually, I have a comment and a couple of questions, which really could probably, I hope, hope, will be like one word or one short sentence answers. Oh, okay, is that that's a hint? Okay, okay. that is a hint. Um, <laughs> The, the first is a comment, and in speaking with some of the neighbors on, on Upper Road, they kind of said, well, you can go. Why don't you go to the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> You've been selected. And that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> um, in any case, one is I, I somewhat congratulate you for coming from a design, marketing, slash, et cetera, background on your saying, oh, it's only $8 a you know. Uh, however much a month, mm -hmm. it's really about a hundred dollars on the average bill, and it's not for, it's you say it's not a permanent tax hike. It's basically a forty-year tax hike, which to a lot of mm -hmm. us, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm old enough. Yeah. I might be dead by then. <laughs> so you'll get out on the back end of it. it. <laughs> so it's permanent, you know. So that's it's. Well, the it, rate. It isn't, ticked, right. Let me just say it yeah. ticks some people off that I know of. Yeah. That words are being played with. Oh, well, we don't mean to play with them. I, so. I know yep, that, but you. I'm just, I said, I'm the messenger here. Okay, <laughs> and we'll take that message. Thank yeah. you. Um, the I just the, want to say that um, one, one of the things that, that is an advantage of doing it this way is that we could pay off the loan sooner. Oh, no, it's just yeah. the phrasing of it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, the issue. we'll take that. Thank Be you. Clear. You yeah. know, it's this much a year. Okay. For up to this many years. Good, good would be point. Be the preferred thing. Thank it you. Because it sounds like you're trying to scenario. play a game. Right. Yeah. No, but gotcha. we're trying to be upfront at the worst yeah, case. Yeah, but it's scenario. not yeah. clear. Yep. Good oh, no. point. Thank you. Um, okay. The other thing was uh, a huge push for. We really think the. I'm obvious, we're obviously in, on upper road. We don't have sewage. Mm -hmm. Probably Correct. never will. Right. Um, really think the town people should be educated if it's 30 percent but all of us are having to use pay for this how people can learn not to throw oil Bingo. tampons yes. etc down yes. the toilet it's very easy yes that's a one word answer yes we need to do that we need better education we need yeah. education with a our children better education at school absolutely i would it be happy to, to help you with thank the you. graphics I would, and the material for i would it. love that help and i will get the students of of computer and communication at umass to help you with i it. would love that help 
because that's what I teach. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. Un unfortunately, it's not just education. We we've done as much. We've done so much outreach. But over it's the marketing. Last, and and we have to. If people just stopped with wipes, dental floss, and grease right now, every single user, we w half of our problems would be delayed. Um, and, and we wouldn't be under under so much pressure to, to do the repairs. Well, the reverse of marketing is to say, for every time that there is a problem there, each household who uses the sewer will get a $50 fine. Mm. It will work within a month, I guarantee it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. We'll take, well, I'd love to talk with you, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I you know, it's the reverse side of marketing. Mm -hmm. It's how to get people to do things. Okay. In any case, I love that. well, we did love buy a help. camera for for Kevin to to um, do some investigation. <laughs> Next question. It was mentioned that there would be after the vote on Monday there would still be a decision made between the 11.1 .1 or the 19 million. Yes. How and who makes that decision? So it would, the sewers uh, ultimately it would be the sewer commissioners. You These, guys. This three board would make that okay. decision, but in in conjunction with our working group engineers, in you know. There's there a lot isn't of another town decision. It's you guys. Correct. Correct. Right. It's us and, and the working group. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I have to take my notes back. Yep. Um, if seventy-five percent of or seventy percent of the people in town do not use the sewer system, mm -hmm. what do they get? for having to pay an average yeah. of $100 more per year for 40 years. Yep, so that's a great point. So um, really, I, it's not just where you live, but it's the town you live in. Well, aside from yes, we know we're better citizens, blah, blah, blah. No, not even that. It's just <laughs> this building, it supports our schools, our infrastructure, our, you know, our industry. So you get a lower tax rate because we have industry that, that uses that system and is here because of that. So there's intangibles, but I can't say, I haven't had a good job selling. I need to no, help marketing Is there that. a service that we get for that so money? The one thing, yes or no? Uh, so no, no yeah. at this time, but what we're looking okay. at. Okay, no is fine. No, I don't want to finish with that because there's, what we are looking at, what we've heard from people um, in town is that they would like some help and some tangible something. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at, um, having that system once it's up had been redone at the at the South Deerfield plant to be able That's to take septage take. Yeah. from from people's uh, when they have say Greg's or something pump it they would then you know there's a thousand so dollars to pump it. that will save you about a hundred dollars or eighty dollars. Yeah, it could, it could I've be. I've had to pay for the septic cleaning enough times that I know right. the bill. <laughs> yeah the the, the uh, disposal fee right is yeah. about a, between a hundred and two hundred bucks or something like that for. Well eighty to a hundred. Oh. Maybe, but. You got a good deal. Um, so anyway, so we were hoping maybe that we could waive that fee or a portion of that fee. Um, but that, infra that takes more infrastructure and more cost to build at our plant. Um, so we're trying to weigh that and see if we can do that. And, you know, and th once we have that, sure, we spend money to put that infrastructure in place. But it would be there for many, many years to, to take people's. But as of now, so, the answer is no. Right. I don't have anything okay. at the moment. Bottom yeah. Line. No. Um, I think there's only I, I apologize, but no, was please ask. Short... This is what this is for. Ask the questions. So, if the vote on Monday, I heard you answer someone else prior to myself, that if the vote is no, you would then continue to try and have get this yes. happen. Yes. So this will just be an endless thing until you get the, way, the vote you're looking for. Yeah. We, don't we, don't we have, have a choice. We have to do All right, something that, yep. again. As yes. Just, okay. Yep. That's the end of my. Thank list. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming and being selected. <laughs> Ken, uh, oh, okay. Yep. No, all right. <laughs> Just a point of clarification. The vote on Monday has no impact on whether the 30% charge is going to go on to tax bills next year. Is that correct? That $1 is going to be there or the uh, overtime? Um, Ken, what are you talking about? Let I'm me talking see about the non-user the non-sewer user fee, or non-sewer portion of the taxations going forward, is that going to become an automatic item? O only if we move forward with the project. So only that's, if you move forward with the project. Yes, and eventually I'm gonna say yes, because we have to move forward with the project, but. But I'm just saying, if <laughs> it's totally contingent on the project at this point in time. Yes. Even though it's supposed to be have been going on for 70 years. That's true. That's true. It should okay. have been. I'm a, just asking you. No, that's a fair point. Um, there, there's, 
you know, if you look at, if you actually look at the legislation, it says that it should have been funded all along, but yeah. it hasn't been by taxation. Okay. So, yeah. So that's tied totally to the project. It is at the moment. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sh please sure. come then. That's what we're here for. Yep. <laughs> is there a percentage of the town people that is necessary to make a vote, or if only two people show up, does that still carry the vote in uh, your field? The quorum question. So I think uh, we need, uh, I don't know on an election. No. I don't think there's anything on an election. No. So we, we need three people. <laughs> we had 11 so percent. If the turn only one who showed up, I'd have say over everything. Yes, you do. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's democracy. Yep. Well, That's how 11, we're, only 11 percent showed well, up before. <laughs> Those are the rules, I guess, of democracy. I have one question here, and then, and then Denise. Democracy comes from majority. That's true, that's true. Shirley Howard, Snowberry Circle, South Deerfield. Thank you for coming. In government, government funds services for the public. Yes. Not everybody in the public uses all the services. True. I do not have children in the schools yet I am sure that my tax dollars fund the public schools. And that's a good thing. Yes, thank you. There are lots of services in town like that. Yep. The snow plowing, the sidewalks, the parks and recreation. And that's what this is about. This is a government, small town government for the public. And it's up to everybody to fund town services, mm -hmm. whether we use them or not. Right. And right. in the end, it all equals out. True. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Thank very you. much for that comment. So, Denise, yep. Sure, please come. This is I what it's just, for. Um, you had to go. You're whoop, really late. How no, much are fine. the companies putting in towards this and say Deerfield Academy with Great question. all of yes. their all, students? All users pay into the system. So I know we're working on this plant and Old Deerfield doesn't come to this plant. They're still paying for this, um, this fee. So it, it, um, they're paying just alongside everybody else. And we're hoping, you know, that we can get further help from them because when it comes to tax pace, um, the taxpayer paying any nonprofit right now, a historic Deerfield or Bement or something, is not paying their share of the, their 25 percent of the tax. So we're in discussions trying to see how that how they could help and do their fair share as well. So I'm I'm hoping that you know we'll be fruitful in that event. So, but I mean like Yankee Candle, say yep. for example, whatever has whatever thousands of visitors there Absolutely. that use the bathroom, and their their water usage is much higher than say a holiday pizza. So, right. um, so they, they, on percentage, they pay okay, that so same is, percentage. Okay. Yep. Every, every yep. sewer user. Okay. Yep. And, and they I'm pay taxes. And they pay so taxes, sure. too. Cool. It's just really the nonprofits that are in that other boat, which is a big chunk of our area. So, I mean, it, so we're working on that to get some help there. Uh, any other questions? Jeff, please come up. Yeah, Jeff Upton, and I'm... Uh, on Hillside or off from Hillside Road, septic user. I've been trying to stay as neutral as possible here on this for several years now, uh, trying to listen and learn, which I have. And uh, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions still, which is too bad. I know. Because this is a complicated issue. You know, people say, well, why does it take so long and so on and so forth? Uh, there's a lot to it. Yep. So, but uh, there's a couple of things that just observation-wise, and again, I'm not trying to be critical or whatever, but I know you have a working group. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people in town feel that that's a little skewed Kay. because of vested interest. Okay. And at the same time, though, we have, and it's been voiced several times here, we have people in town that are very knowledgeable yes. about this. And we're looking at those. And, and hopefully some of those people could be included with this working group. I agree Jeff, with that, Jeff, it's, completely. It's our intention. It's our right. intention. Okay. I, and, and I hope so. Because, it is. Because it is. we have, you know, I can think of five or six people right off the yep. top of my head yep. that spent a lot of time with this, yep. are very knowledgeable, or are in the field. Right. And hopefully they would be brought on board. Yep. Uh, as far as the services and that, and I don't want to get into a big argument, uh, but uh, I understand I myself pay my taxes. 
there's a lot of services in town that I don't use, but there is a distinction between a lot of those other services, mm -hmm. in fact, most of them, compared to the sewer system. Because you could use them and versus that, not could that use them. Being it's is true. that when residents move into Deerfield, all these other services, they're available to them, whether they use them or not. Yeah. With the septic here that we have with our system, it is not available to basically two-thirds of the town. And that's why I think you're getting some resistance. Of course. I so understand obviously, that. Yep. And so I just pe hope, hopefully everybody keeps that in mind, that you there, are, are, there are some different views out there, and hopefully there is. people are a little bit more tolerant when somebody tries to express a different point of view. Yep. And that's really important because I think you're right about that. There is, um, there is, um, you know, we use schools as an example, but mm. you you could adopt a child and put your child sure. in school. There's there's ways that you could do that, um, um, but and, and and then there's other 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 services that you don't have access to, like the sewer, unless you right. want to stop in every day. And you know, this bathroom right. is open, right? You well, know, not well, nine to four. Right. So, um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there, um, there, there's a choice there, but I think. Um, so if I request right, no. showers to be installed, <laughs> we, we, in we the could town look hall into that. Work. <laughs> no, you're right though. That may, that's a very fair point, and you've made that before, and I appreciate right. that. Well, I just hope that yeah. people remember a key word that seems to be missing in in our world today, and that's compromise. Mm -hmm. So I agree with that. Let's let's see what happens. Thank you, at Jeff. that point. Yep. Okay. I, I think, and, and Jeff, since you're on the Capital Improvement Committee, you know that one of the things we've been wrestling with is, is trying to keep the cost down, and delaying only increases the cost. And, and so, I mean, at some point, we just have to make a decision on this. Right. And I understand that. But, yep. but just please Good point. Yep. tap, into, tap the into the knowledge and the people that are available. I, I would we want to. Committee. We want to. That would that's, be great. Jeff, that's not a problem. Okay. And I'm, I'm hoping Thank you. that. And one other thing. Yes. Please don't. Let's not have the uh, component for the septic system disposal as far as the, uh, the septic tanks an afterthought or mm -hmm. an add on, yeah. because that obviously would be more expensive. If we're in the initial design here, right. let's We've take not a look at that right yet. away yeah. and yeah. figure out whether it's cost effective or not. Right, in the long because term. Yep. Obviously, that's going to have an impact, and that will probably have an impact on Monday's vote. I think so, too. Yeah. Jeff, I mean, it's my I, commitment I, I, to I look at that. You know, you know that I have said every single meeting that I am really committed to that because that yeah. is a true expense for non-sewer users. Mm. That and could if benefit. They are, and if they are paying right. into this, then there should be some benefit. My initial thought was it would just, you know, you, you still have to pay Greg's to pump, but you wouldn't have to do a disposal fee. But then after having discussions, it would be some kind of discount because you still would have the processing Yeah, there's going to be, there's yeah. going to be something there. So you can't, look at that you study can't ask the sewer users Obviously, to take but on the I think a question came of, up tonight of, the whole thing. of what are the septic users, you yeah. know, septic tank uh, users getting out of this. And that's one but thing that's we could only going we could to be help. more expensive. Right. That's going to be a huge, more expensive fee down the line because there's fewer and fewer places. Well, it could places. be. That's, that's my concern yeah. is it's, that, it's uh, there are fewer and fewer you know, places the towns to are having problems uh, disposing now right. because there's fewer and fewer places. Well, at some point in time, when oh. you've got two-thirds of your town uh, handling it on their own, right. those disposal fees, I imagine, are right. going to yeah. increase quite a bit, too, yeah. because whoever's doing the pumping has to dispose of it. Right. And they're going to be limited to where they can, too. So those fees are going to go up. Yep. So it's just something to consider. It would benefit everybody. I agree. I definitely I, I, curious to look into that. I, am you, we're, I think the I whole think board is that. committed to that. And right. hopefully we can make that yeah. a reality. Right. It's certainly not in the 11 grant, but, I mean, we haven't, we haven't designed everything yet. We can, we can nothing, look at that. Nothing right. has yeah. been part of I mean, we have, that part hasn't gone out yet. So mm -hmm. we can okay. certainly include Thank you. that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? I'm really so grateful you guys all came out tonight to, to tell us your concerns and ask questions and uh, guide us a little more on our decisions and how we go about this. And we really want this to be transparent, but the fact is we really need to move forward. So we just hope that people will support this because this is the most sensible way and it's the least, least um, 
stressful because we can be thoughtful in our process and try to parcel out the different parts to get money and, and string it out a little bit so that what, what we really need to get done is like maybe the head works and the grinder kind of thing and then figure out some of this other stuff that where we might have more opportunities to pull in money. But if something fails, like the electrical panel fails, then we have to go out right away. Mm. And it will cost us money ultimately much more so than you know, in a thoughtful manner. So yeah. we just, we don't want to be stressed out about this, but we need to move forward and, and we need, to, and that we just really don't have a choice. And like I said, nobody wants to spend money on this. And that's been clear for 20 years and, you know, that I've been involved and, and, and myself included. I, I would rather not have to do this. I mean, you don't want to but look we have at to. it. But we really have to. I so. see it moving. So um, I thank you all for coming tonight. I, there's a couple other items we have to hit on our thing, but I think this pretty much concludes. Anybody want to add anything, Dave? Any, anything we missed? We're in pretty good shape. I just want um, to say um, send I, had us an an email. Emer I had an emergency mosquito district meeting yesterday. We were just um, there. There's a lot of triple E coming around. Yeah. Not here, but. No, we're testing. There's aggressive testing going on, and none of our mosquitoes are testing. Um, but the problem is that the temperature is getting cooler, and the most of the time you, you, when you get the mosquitoes in the traps are at dawn and dusk. And with the cooler um, temperature you get less amount of mosquitoes and so we don't you know it, it, just because it's not testing positive doesn't mean They're that not it's not around so please use a bug repellent and wear long sleeves if you're out doing activities at dawn and another dusk. Another positive case today. I think it's out east a bit. Yes. But um, so there, be careful, just, the Triple E stuff is the dangerous. The Triple E stuff is terrible. So please just be vigilant, especially now because the weather is more pleasant, so you're more out. Um, so your risk factor actually is, is increasing So because you're more outside. So please um, use the bug, bug repellent. So um, thank you all again. Have a great night. I'm just, we're going to hit two other quick things in ADA yeah, ADA. coordinator so, yeah. and notice and of Carolyn non Carolyn had mentioned putting those on the agenda because we're trying to get that grant application in for the self-evaluation transition plan. Do we need to do it plan. tonight? We don't. We can yeah, wait. we can do it tonight. I mean. Tomorrow? We can do it. Meeting? We can do it Wednesday. I think we'll be fine. But if you want to do what it. What do you need? We'll, no, no, no. We can just, why don't we just do it tonight? What have you got? So basically, Kevin is currently the ADA coordinator. Kevin's right. willing to give that up to me. He, I bet he is. I think prefer that. And, we <laughs> and need with to, all the work that we're getting root, ready to right. do on we that need, stuff. We need to focus yeah. on our policies and stuff. So okay. I'm willing to take that on. I thank so you So I that. basically gave you drafts that indicate our, that. I'm fine with this. I'm good. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. I make a motion that we have... Adopt the Americans with Disabilities Act ADA um, okay. policy and the Americans with Disabilities Act grievance procedure. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, the up upcoming meetings we covered already, so we're good. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, Jonathan. Have a great night, and thank you all for coming again. I really appreciate it.